I don't know how to start this. Hi, in fact, I could just, just, I'm gonna review something that's not an audio product that I bought and I, this is all new to me. Wallpaper available in the description. So, um, for those of you who aren't following the canon that is Zeos's life, um, Princess Pasta exists. Her and I hang out. We wanna travel places. We wouldn't know where to travel, so we threw darts at a map and we came this close to Hawaii, but we missed, and we ended up with three choices, and then her patrons, because she has her own Patreon, linked in the description, um, picked from South Carolina, Illinois, and Alaska. Those are where the three darts landed. There's a video of us throwing the darts and everything. And um, Alaska won. A lot, by a lot. Alaska fucking dominated. Maybe I should have done this video and I could have gotten some South Carolina barbecue out of it or, you know, got Expona. I'm going Expona anyway, but could have got that out of the way. Um, so in order to make myself not lose my mind, because I think, look, I was the one that had the idea of like, let's go explore the country. I haven't seen all of my country, my beautiful of America, America, all that. So, you know, I have nothing, there's nothing wrong with Alaska. It's just like... That's the butt of everyone's joke is, haha, we'll just ship them to Alaska. And um, so, to make myself feel better about this trip, I spent money on something that I don't have any of. B binoculars. A $700 pair of binoculars. For looking at things in Alaska, either off the side of a cruise ship or standing atop a lovely mountain crest. I just needed something to focus to like, okay, we'll go to Alaska, uh, I'll buy binoculars for it. It was it, it was like, that was the, I needed just that, because I was tired of spending money just constantly on headphones and amps and speakers. Well, I haven't spent money on speakers in a while, I'm apologizing. There will be more speakers in 2020, I tr trust me on this. 2020, speakers, hashtag. So, I did some research into, um, binoculars real real quick and actually my brother if you don't know my brother has a youtube channel called c does and he's he's a gun guy but it's hard to be a gun guy on youtube so he decided to focus on what interests him the most which is rifle scopes and red dots and all the actual optics that you put on guns and it's like well that how many things could there be and holy fuck there is a lot so vortex and steiner and and uh what's the other one that's like crazy expensive uh, he's, he can list names, like, you know, I can list names of headphone companies and designs of amplifier architectures. He can list names of, you know, optics manufacturers and well, the German glass, oh, the Japanese glass, oh, the, the American-made stuff. Leopold, that's another big one. So I decided one day, snap, I'm going to just look up binoculars. I just, I just, I want a nice set of binoculars. I want to be able to hold them up. I remember as a kid... My father had this like huge pair of like 20 pound binoculars that you couldn't even hold up. And they had the adjustability to go from like 12X to like 32X. And you couldn't hold them still, you just couldn't. So you had to put them on something where it had a tripod mount. And then you're like, you can't touch them. And then what the fuck's the point of binoculars that are so big you can't carry them? But it was like, wow, because it's better than a telescope. My uncle had a telescope. And these big binoculars, and you could just see everything. I thought that was the coolest thing as a kid. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy binoculars. I'm going to go on this trip. I'm going to use them. And so I started just looking at binoculars. And then also, just like I have a $10 Telegram chat for my patrons, my brother has a $5 Telegram chat for his few patrons. It's like a handful of people. And one of the people in there is like, hey, my mother retired and she wanted, she's a bird watcher and I bought her these Canon optical image stabilization active binoculars and they're amazing. And then it dawned on me that I don't do things unless there's like a big leap in technology and like some sort of thing that makes me actually interested in it. Because I'm just like, eh, amps and speed. I know, I know what incremental better is. And even if I got like a thousand dollar pair of Leopold binoculars, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be absolutely clear and better looking than I've ever looked through anything that's ever been a binocular or a telescope or a rifle scope or anything. But it doesn't have that. It doesn't have the Tesla advantage. Like everyone, you can have a faster car and you can have a faster car and you can have a faster car or you can have a Tesla 
which is also a faster car by a lot. Also, it's way cheaper, and also it has, you can leave the air conditioner on because it doesn't use gas. It's like, that's a huge chunk of, whoa. And so I took the shot at these. And there were two models. That, actually, wait, let me show you the models that were available first before we go into it. Here's the ones I got. They're the 12 by 36. Um, I'm not going to sound like an idiot and say what that 12 X is 12 times optical and 36 is the width. I believe it's like how much you can actually see. And, uh, my brother can explain it. It's, it's 36 millimeter or 1.42 inch objective lens. I, I guess that's the actual size of the lens. And the choice was this 10 X 10 by 30 for $494. And I'm like, Oh, okay that's reasonable but if i'm going to spend more than like 200 bucks on a pair of binoculars i want to spend on this pair of binoculars and know that i've got i don't want to have a 10x and be like god i wish i had the 12 because it's very rarely you'll have like the 12x and you say god i wish i had the 10. that that, that ain't gonna happen actually looking down here customers also look at this 361 dollar 8 by 25 canon image stabilization binoculars so there is an even cheaper one so I made the decision between these two, between the 10 and the 12, I get the 12. And you thinking like, wow, Zeos, that's a $662 pair of binoculars. You know, why would you be buying the top of the range? But no, no, <laughs> ha, ha, let me, let me laugh at the proper volume. Ha, you think that the pitiful $662 binocular that I purchased is anywhere near the top of the line? You fools. No, look at this 10, 10X by 42, $1,300. Now, the other one was 10 by 36. This is 10 by 30, 42, so it's a wider, it's a huge lens. And I don't know what else it does, like, I don't know. And then there's an 18 by 50 that's cheaper. That's actually only $1,115. So I did not in any way, shape, or form go out and buy the top of the line of anything. I looked at the bottom of the, the, pretty much the three at the bottom of the barrel, I bought like the highest level of the bottom of the barrel of optical, because I don't think anybody else does actual active electronic optical image stabilization. And the reason Canon can do it is because Canon is known for something else. Cameras, camera lenses, those big fucking DSLRs that, you know, DMS wanders around taking videos with. Those all have literally motors in them that make the glass. They have gyroscopes and gyroscopic sensors and motors. So when you move the camera like this, it perfectly balances out and doesn't look like anything's moving. And I'm going to demonstrate that at the end of this video. In fact, there'll be a timestamp, either in a pinned comment or in the description that takes you to the end of this video, where I'm going to have to edit in demonstrating what these do. So there's the $1,100. They look amazing, by the way. That looks like Archie from um, Watchmen, which th that's automatically a turn on. And those look still cool, but um, that looks better. So purchase them, Amazon, they show up. Little tiny box, I was expecting like a bigger, I was expecting them to be bigger. Like I was expecting them to be heavy. And they're not big and they're not heavy. And I just got to take out the lens caps because we have to talk. See, I, I was worried when I, before I started this video that I've never done something like this. Can I even get like three minutes of content out of this? I'm Zeos. Put an anime waifu on, I can talk about anything. Start with the bag. It has this beautiful metal machined like stamp attached to it. And the first thing you notice about that is it's crooked. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I paid $600, actually nearly $700 with tax. And that Canon logo is just crooked, but like that much. And I'm like, uh, and then I realized that it's probably fine because the bag's made in China. This bag is made in China. Plus it's got a weird slanted to top. The idea with this bag, and I don't, I have some issues with this carry bag. Let me, let me talk about that for a second. This is the internal strap. You cannot detach the, the shoulder strap from the bag. It's, it's permanent. Like you'd have to, you can't even unwire it because it'd have to be, you'd have to cut it or break the plastic to get it off. And that sort of sucks because if I'm going to have this around my personage while on a cruise ship or a hike, I kind of want a better strap than this. This is a weak ass strap. Weak ass strap there, Canon. Weak ass strap. 
I do like the way it opens. I like the way it zippers across the top. You can has a good area to grab it, pull down. You don't have to go all the way down to get the binoculars out. You can just go halfway and then pull out your babies. Um, inside here is where it says Made in China. And a little, pla little label down there. And there's no way to fix... What's behind this? There's, there's where they mounted this, so you can't even fucking fix it. Uh, I would love for this to have the ability to change the straps without me cutting and breaking and destroying the actual original strap. But, oh well. It's... Mm, I would say padded well, but it's really not. It's, it's, it's sufficient to keep it from getting banged up and busted, but it's no crush-proofness there. Let's talk about the actual binoculars. Now, uh, I've attached the neck strap, which, as you saw, I was hanging out of the bag because as much as I do like the shape of this bag, when you put things in it like that, it's sort of like, well, then you, what are you going to start folding this and, and messing with it to put it in the bag? And it's like, eh, I fucking want to do that. So another thing I was going to do is I was going to take this strap off and then just use a strap that's built into the binocular and just use that for the thing, which I could do. I could just zip it up, you know, this much. This strap comes out, I carry it, and then I could just zip the bag away, but then the bag falls down, and it's like, uh. Okay, so fuck this bag for a bit. I like the bag, but fuck the bag. I like this strap better. Uh, it does say Canon on it. It has a little bit of a neck relief, like here. I don't know, it's rubberized. I felt better straps, but this is not terrible. I mean, it's Canon. They sell a trillion of these a year for every DSLR that they put out. I had to uh, loop it through and everything. The actual, these are light. I don't know, what's their actual weight? Lady, what's their weight? She doesn't know. I'm gonna estimate, and I haven't looked this up, so if I get it wrong, these are less than three pounds. I'm gonna say this is two pounds two pounds, two ounces, or one pound, 15, they're not heavy. And that's the thing, when you, I picked up a rifle scope at, uh, there's a gun show that happens around Philadelphia, and there was a rifle there, rifle scope there that was this long. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder what that would be like on my rifle. And I picked it up, and it was six fucking pounds. All glass. Glass, followed by glass, 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 like, just, it was like a baseball bat. And it was like, holy God, you're supposed to put this on a weapon? That doesn't make any sense. And this, I nearly hit myself in the face with, because it doesn't weigh anything. It's, I want to say it's rubberized, but I know everyone's afraid of that rubberized coating. But this is one solid piece. What happens differently between this and normal binoculars is instead of the center bit adjusting, you literally adjust the back. And they're geared together, so you can't fuck it up. But they're geared internally, so you don't see it. And that adjusts the width right there of your eyes. Um, there's no front lens caps at all. I found that was a little bit odd. Like, they don't give me the option. You're supposed to keep them in the bag, or you're supposed to put them down. This is soft enough rubber to just place it down on a hard surface. It's going to be fine. I just thought it would be nice if it had some sort of, like, cap. Or even if it was, like, a full-on... It doesn't have to be individual. It could have been just, like, a big oval thing that popped on just so I could leave them out if I didn't want to put it in the bag. It does come with caps for the back. Unfortunately, um, I actually just threw these back into the box and shoved it in my closet because these fuckers, let me tell you about these fuckers. So it's nice to keep your things covered so you don't have dust on if you do have it sitting out. But they're not attached to each other. You can't attach them to the unit. They just are free floating discs. This is a big soft piece of rubber which is nice, because it's good to hold against like your eyelid. But when you go to put this on, that happens every time, unless you perfectly like squeeze and get it just, and then place it down. They're more annoying than they're worth. They are fucking more annoying than they're worth. So I just literally just, I don't give a shit, take them off. So they might as well not come with that. This could have also just used like a, like a little bra, something that could just hang down when I'm not using it. Uh, I don't know if I hate the fact that these straps are attached to the adjustable bit because I, don't know, I feel like they'd be better off. This is a moving, twisting piece, and that means there is a seal, and I don't know if I want to have the weight of it, even though it doesn't weigh much, hanging off of that. I mean, I guess Canon knows what they're doing. Here is the battery compartment, 
and I was surprised because I was expecting literally buying a $600 thing and it's going to come with a lithium battery that I have to load in with a Canon charger. And no, two Panasonic double A's. I was like, wow, that's, that's convenient. That's, that's super convenient. Is that the correct direction? One thing that bothers me is this is the more expensive ones, the $1,200 ones, those say the word waterproof. This nowhere on it does it say the word waterproof. When you click this down, there's no seals there. It's just a plastic door. So I don't think this is a waterproof setup, which is not super concerning to me. I'm not going to be in a river, but I'd like if my $600, $700 binoculars didn't break. Oh, and I didn't know this until I pulled them out and held them in my hand. Right there, it says made in Japan, and that gives me boners. I love Jap Japanese things, blatantly. Um, and having something like... Look, you can make quality stuff in China. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying if I'm spending this sort of money on something that's supposed to be precision, I'd rather have the Chinese doing it. That's all. Hashtag uh, JapanBuiltIt.com So, rubberized feel. The actual way you hold it has a nice little indent here over the Made in Japan thing and the serial number. It's got all this bullshit written on it. There's your battery door. doesn't really affect it. It's got these two... I, I want to call them hard feet, and I'm not sure, like you, you, like when you put them down, there's a hard foot here, here, and here, so it's got like a, a tripod thing going on, so that those are the three points it would rest on, but they're so small, like those would actually do the job, but I'm not sure about this one, that it will rest just on those, it's weird, um, since this doesn't shift apart, it's actually, it's nice, it actually feels nice to hold, it's got a good thing, now the top is where the quote-unquote magic happens, the controls for this unit, other than the adjustability between the side optics there, you have the adjustability for, uh, if you have different prescriptions between your eyes, you can turn this side to adjust it. I have to be like right about there, like almost perfect. Actually, I found distance depends. If I'm looking real close to something, I have to be one notch to the right. If I'm looking way distance, it's about perfect. It's like just about there. And that's set at the factory to be whatever it is. Here's your normal focal adjustment. It just, you could see the lens is going in and out. That's just, that's normal. Welcome to normality. It's just a binocular. If the batteries in this don't work, it's just a binocular. It's a very, very good binocular. Like, here's how I knew that these were nice. If I look out my window at night and I'm just looking out in the darkness, I can still see everything. Like, I, I, I was like, holy crap, it's like I can see, like, my real eyes. So my brother's big complaint with a lot of the people that, like, oh, I could get a scope for 150 bucks. It does the same thing as that $2,000 scope. And my brother just shakes his head because that's like someone telling me that Beats can do the exact same thing as these Aeolus. And I just shake my head because, you know, fucking, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. My brother does that with glass. It's like, if you don't spend on the glass and the quality of how it's built, how it's coated, how it's set up, you're going to lose out. And people are dumb. People want to believe that their $70 headphones are just as good as anything $1,000. And they're fucking not. you not saying you can't have fun with it. not saying it's not going to make sound. But we all know better. If you're watching this channel, we know better. So my brother's trying to do the same thing with, like, people who understand optics. You pay, you pay for quality sometimes that you literally can't just get that luck. I would love if iOS was avail OIS was available on a set of Leopold because I've looked through a Leopold like a two thousand dollar scope, and it is like I don't understand how it does. How does it? How does glass do that? Where things look clearer through it than my real eyes. But I would not trade. A pair of binoculars, twice the price of this, if it doesn't have OIS. That makes this fucking thing. I was going to call it a headphone now. My brain literally went, that makes this headphone. And I'm like, mm -mm, stop. Head television. This button. This green light. All the difference in the world. Now, I'm going to demo it. Again, you could. There's a link to it. Now, I could, if I was super cool, I would cut it in to this. But I think at the end, it's just gonna be like a sound demo, only a sight demo. 
I'm not going to do a separate video because I won't get a copyright strike, but there'll be a definite point because you, I can actually hold the GoPro right up to this and just, it'll focus and I could see it, but it's nighttime out right now and it will look better in the day. Although I could do it night too. We'll find out. When this video is officially done, I'm ready to cut and do the thing, I'll, I'll try it. Um, this is just a, a momentary button. I thought when I ordered them, I didn't do any research. It was sort of like a spur of the moment. A little bit of research. Got excited. Hit the buy now. That's how, that's how Zeos functions. Sometimes it's got speakers, sometimes headphones, sometimes amps. Today it was binoculars. Hit the button, didn't know nothing about it, but I know that it's gonna do optical image stabilization. I can't wait. And I thought it would be a turn on, turn off thing. Pull out your, your binoculars, turn on the image stabilization, and then use them, and then turn it off. Or hold the button, it turns on, and runs until it doesn't detect movement, or until a timer of 10 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute, and then it would shut off. It's not that. It is singularly momentary. You pick it up, you look where you're gonna look, you hit this button, and I thought I had to push it hard because it goes down very far, but it's actually a very sensitive button. It's kind of like a uh, mechanical keyboard. You just have to touch it a little bit, and then that green light comes on, and then you're getting stabilization. And according to the manual, these batteries, which are the batteries it comes with, should last nine hours, continuous, of doing what it's doing. And there is motors, there's literally motors going, keeping that lens perfectly still. And that's perfect for me. I, I, I was against it at first. I was like, man, I wish we could just tap it once and then have 10 seconds without having to hold the button. But I've gotten so used to just picking it up, button, let go, it's, that's it. So that means if I did the actual math on how long I've looked through these before this review, with that iOS on, it's probably somewhere in the realm of like seven minutes. Seven minutes. That's all, like like 20 seconds was all I needed to know that this is like the best fucking way to do head, uh, I said headphones again, binoculars. Binoc, <sighs> unique New York, binoculars. This is the, this is it. I don't care about any other thing that doesn't have OIS. I don't. I don't fucking care. You'll understand in the video when I put the stabilization on. Because it's like, oh yeah, binoculars, I've looked through those. Now imagine perfect smoothness. Panning. P perfect. I, I'm tempted to get a GoPro Hero 8. This is a GoPro Hero 4. I have a 5. It sucks. The audio sucks. I didn't bother with the 6. The seven seemed like a, just an upgrade of the six. The eight is the only one that I've actually had someone talk about. It says, oh, the actual microphones are decent and it has image stabilization. Although I think GoPro is still doing it digitally. You want optical. There's digital stabilization where it just takes a screen and it shakes it around and it says this pixel has, it, this pixel is moving like this and it digitally makes everything smaller and then holds that pixel still. And then you get like that warping, Effect. It's gotten much better over the years, but that's digital stabilization. And obviously, monocles are not going to be that. But if I'm going to get a camera from ahead, and I, you know, if you don't, if like the, the little movements, like the big movements, you're not going to get rid of any shaking. But the little movements, like that, I'm doing little movements now. That would be so much better if it was just the lenses actually compensating. I fucking love, I love these enough to do a review. I don't usually buy random things other than my bidet. Check out my bidet reviews on this channel. Just search the word bidet under Z reviews. And other than those, there's not much that I delve into that's sort of strange. Maybe my NAS, that was a big deal. Um, but these, I feel like this is one of those breaches in technology that's like, wow, how did anything exist before this? How did, how did anything exist before that button, that button right there. <sighs> I love these things. And the 10X are basically without this bit on the front, so to be even shorter. I'm glad I got the 12, the 12 is perfect. Actually looking through them, let me give you a little description of the actual, I was looking out my windows just at the trees, just at the the bare trees from, the, from winter is here. And the trees that are just like 20 feet out my window, the bark is like hyper realistic. 
Like I could see the detail. The focusing goes perfect. The way I run them is I, I look through them like normal binoculars, I focus, I get my sighting on them, and then I hit the button. And that is just the moment you hit that button, every moment you hit that button, you understand exactly why you paid for these. I didn't just get another $200 set of binoculars or another $700 set that doesn't have that button. Oh, oh. Oh, another thing this is missing that pisses me off. Because I got it and I'm like, all right, I'll, I could bring it to the shooting range. I go shooting and I don't have a spotter scope. My friend brings a spotter scope. My brother brings a spotter scope. So spotter scope is going to be fucking expensive too. So I'm like, oh, if I'm spending $700 in binoculars, I'll use them as a spotter scope. I'll just screw it onto the, um, you know, the, the quarter 20 mount for, for a, a tripod. You, oh, did you not fucking put one on Canon? Why? Now, granted, I know that they're like a stabilizing set and I shouldn't need to mount them, but just having them set up on the table just to peer through instead of like having to pick them, just, mm, it's something that should have just fucking been there, like right there, like here. Here or here should have been a little quarter 20 that I could just go and it just stays there and it's not, it doesn't exist. I may end up building a thing that just goes around, like just holds this so I can put it into a tripod. Because I, I really, really want one there. I just really wanted to be able to put it on something without it just, like, sitting there. Can we see through that? We'll see it through it tomorrow when the daylight has, has come. I love these things. And I think this tech. I've looked through expensive binoculars. I've looked through expensive scopes. And they're all grand. But you can't hold them fucking still. And once science steps up and says, hey, wait, you don't have to anymore. Boop. It's the greatest fucking thing. It's the greatest feeling. I get this feeling of being in the future and knowing that this is better than every binocular that has ever come before it and anything to the side that is more expensive. I, w I can't even imagine if the more expensive ones have a better stabilization system. I don't think that's what they do. I think those are just waterproof and slightly wider aperture. So probably larger glass pieces they're moving around. This is sort of like, a, this is definitely the more compact version. Look fits in my hand. I cannot wait to travel with these. These are not my father's gigantic ones. And I don't want my father's gigantic ones. I want these. These with the better glass and the stabilization and just Japan. Japan built. And the, uh, the book, you know it's good when the first language is Japanese and then it goes to English. That's how you know. And I read through this thing and it's like, never look at the sun. It literally says that. It's like, that's one of the things it's like, hey, don't look at the sun. And I'm like, all right, well, you say so. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add to this as far as negatives go, other than not having like, the caps and having the bag be a little bit like, I just want a little more for the bag, but it's a bag. I'm sure I could find a specific purpose-made binocular bag that has removable straps or a better strap and then, you know, it waterproof and it latches and it has a pl extra, extra pockets because this doesn't have like anything even if i kept the lens caps on i'm just b dropping them in the bottom of the bag like i don't know like the point so the bag functions but the and that's probably an important part more important than like a headphone case headphone case okay you're traveling with it you put it away you get it at your hotel you take them out binoculars you are traveling with them mostly in the bag until you take them out so the bag has to function i don't know do you like this review? Do you like that I'm just... I mean, I'm going to use the wallpaper, so, I mean, who doesn't like a review automatically? I don't know how many different weird things I want to buy per year, but this is like... And they lock and play. Like, when you adjust this, it is stiff, and it stays there. I've not had it, like, I've not... Even if you hold it by just one side, like, that's not doing that. That takes actual effort to twist that so once you get it in place it's pretty much it's pretty much done um uh, yeah i think we're good i wonder what this material is it's like coating because it feels rubbery but it doesn't feel like that rubber that you get on like 20 dollar headphones that makes it feel premium this is what it actually should feel like when they try to make it feel premium i also like the fact it's not black it's like a gray Almost a green gray. And it says Canon up top and it says image stabilizer. 
fucking amazing. It's, it's an amazing piece of technology and I love it. And um, I'm going to demo that technology right now. Everybody, welcome to a public park in narrow field of view. I'm now going to zoom in on that lady over there. Can you see her? No? Well, she's going to hold up a sign and we're going to see if we can see it. So here we go. So as good as I can get this rig. There we go. I'm zooming up, hand holding this. She's holding a sign. I'm going to activate and stabilization. So you can read the sign now, I'm sure. And now no stabilization. It says, hold, it says much as I can hold it still while holding it by hand. And stabilization. What a wonderful assistant I have. Isn't this great? Isn't this wonderful? We can see we'll do a panning shot. There we go. Stabilized panning shot. She'll just stay out there all day. How long should I keep this going? And it should be focused. I focus it with my eye. Wonderful. All right, time to wave pasta out. Thank you for stopping by. Pull you out of here. There we go. And that's what 12X stabilized looks like across a giant field in narrow field of view on the GoPro. Look at my shoes, there's my shoes. Welcome to Not My Window. So I'm just gonna give you a little look around. So, this is a much more interesting view than I get out of my window. And I've built this rig to give you a little slight demonstration of how this works. So give me a second while I put it in there, and then we'll look around. Oh, you might not be able to hear me, but that's fine. I am not stabilizing it. There's a couple black spots, but that's just from the rig. And that stabilized. Let's see what else we can see out here. Cars, garbage pails. I'm going to try to focus, but I don't know if it's going to work. Stabilized. Freehand. Okay. So that's hand stabilized and that's mechanically stabilized something else interesting we gotta be able to see over there I don't even think I need to tell you when I'm stabilizing it I think you can figure it out I don't want to go blind with the sun either I can't see. The lens is too dark. American flag. It's pretty good on tracking shots too. Wasn't that incredible? See, I just cut it, and then I added that bit, and now I'm back to the table. It's like I'm a real YouTuber. Anyway, now for the outro. That wallpaper, which you've all been staring at, except for when I was looking outside and I couldn't see any waifus at all, um, available in the description. Feel free to crop that, put it on your phone, or wherever you want to print it, do weird things, I don't care. Um, these videos, this is a new type of thing. Like, I'm, I just need to not do a headphone every now and then. Or something that I don't require me to, li to listen to music or, or watch a movie. I just need the freedom to do that. So please, if you like this sort of video, I'm actually going to ask you to give me a like. I don't do that. But I need to know. I need to judge. Give me comments. Say something. And if you support the channel, who knows? Maybe I'll branch out and do weird things. I wouldn't want to pick up like a graphics card and tell you about it. I don't feel like I have the right stuff or the passion to do that. But if I'm passionate about something, I want to talk about it. 
So, uh, Patreon, Subscribestar are the supporter ways on this channel. Um, the $5 tiers get you to see this video early. I don't think anyone really expects to see this video early. It's going to be interesting when the patrons and people on Subscribestar get it. But <laughs> it's what you do. Um, this will not be in the yard sale. Although, there is an optical thing in the random box that's in this month's yard sale. So that's sort of related. Maybe. I don't know. Yard sales are for selling other things. Usually audio things. That's what companies send me. I have to buy this. Audio companies just shovel shit into my mailbox. And I'm just like, thanks. Thanks. <sighs> and anyway, the $10 tiers uh, get you into the private Telegram chat where those people automatically know how great this is because all I've been talking about is this and maybe a headphone or two, but mostly this and then maybe a waifu or two and then mostly this. So uh, that's uh, really good behind the scenes. You'll know everything that's going on before it even happens here on Z Reviews. And there's higher tiers for people who are just like, ah, I was drunk one night and I decided to support for $30. And I'm just like, I want to give you a hug. I want to give you a pat on the back. Um, also check out Hi-Fi Guides, which will not have a binocular section unless you really want one. That'd be super weird if Hi-Fi Guide just has one section for optics. Oh, and uh, check out the links to Princess Boss's Patreon because that's what fucking sent us to fucking Alaska. And my brother's uh, Patreon or YouTube channel, you just check that out. He does, he does for rifle scopes what I do for headphones where I sound demo them. He literally sight demos rifle scopes and, and things like that. He built a rig. It carries, um, it has a special phone that has a certain zoom and ocu it's amazing, actually. I'm rather impressed and kind of jealous because my headphone recording rig doesn't take you there as much as his thing does. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Um, okay. <sighs> okay, we're done. We're done? Are we done? Are we done? I'm done. Are you done? Great. I'll see you tomorrow. It'll probably be a headphone, and I'll try to do more of these if you guys like it. If you don't like it, I just, I, well, you know what? Fuck it. Even if you don't like it, I'm still going to do them because this is Z Reviews, and I'm, last time I checked, I'm Z.